all the way. My Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy? Who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know what's here before me, Jesus do it all things well. Yes, I know what's here before me, Jesus do it all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, shares each wine that I thread, gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter, and my soul a thirst may be, gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see, gushing from the rock before me, Blow a spring of joy I see. All the way my Savior lead me. Oh, the fullness of his love. Perfect rest to me is promised. In my Father's house above, when I make, when I wake to life immortal, wing my flight to realms of day, this my soul through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sister Stoddard, for that theme beautifully rendered. And thank you so much, Ella Mackenzie, for your kind words of introduction. Here to be like Daniel in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 11, we are told that these things happen unto them for n samples. So this is telling us that they are a type and we are the antitype and their experience was written for our admonition. And the word admonition means warning. So their experience is left on record for our what? Warning upon whom the ends of the world are come. Father in heaven, as I open your word to speak to your people, help me to receive from you, to impart unto your church. And oh God, I pray a revival and reformation will be wrought in our hearts so we can be prepared for your soon appearing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Daniel chapter 1. Here to be like Daniel. In verse 1 of Daniel 1, we are seeing that King Nebuchadnezzar came and besieged Jerusalem. This began the 70 weeks prophecy that Jeremiah prophesied that because of disobedience you would be taken into captivity and in verse 2 we are seeing that they took all the vessels of the 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 the, 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 the sanctuary and they placed it in the house of their god friends whenever they conquered a nation they will take 
all that they use in their worship and place it in the house of their God. This is self-exaltation. So they will now believe that they are more powerful than your God, the nation of whom they overthrow. As we go through this presentation, please think of literal Babylon back then and also think of spiritual Babylon now. And just as though God had a people or had a church that stood firm in literal Babylon, God is seeking individuals to stand in spiritual Babylon. Is it you? Who is it I dare to be like Daniel? So we are seeing because of God's people being disobedient, Babylon was exalting himself. Is it because of our disobedience today why spiritual Babylon is exalting himself? Friends, Psalms 46 and verse 10 tells us that be still and know I am God. I will be exalted among the Eden. I will be exalted in the world. So God is seeking individuals to stand in spiritual Babylon like how Daniel stood in spiritual Babylon so his name can be exalted. In verse 3, we are seeing that the king requested that the, 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 the certain of the children of Israel and the king's seed of the princes should be chosen. And friends, it tells us that this pagan king required children whom was no blemish. When I got this message, I cried because I am full of blemishes. But here a pagan king is seeking individual to work for him without blemish. And yet we serve the king of kings and we are full of blemishes. God wants to present to himself, Ephesians 5, 27, a glorious church, one having no spot, no wrinkle, and without blemish. In Romans 12, we are told, that we need to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy, acceptable unto God. You know, friends, to enter the priesthood back then, the priest could not have any blemish. Even if the priest was short, that was considered to be a blemish. And that individual could not serve in the service of the Most High. And yet we come and we give God any and anything. Friends, we need to understand that we serve a holy God and God is calling us tonight to a life of holiness, to a life of righteousness, to a life without blemish. Zechariah 4 and verse 6 tells us, friends, it is not by your might or by my power, but it's by my spirit. Yes, we can live a life free from sin. We can live a life without blemish. Even the very sacrifices offered in the sanctuary had to be without blemish. And any animal came with a blemish were refused. And yet we come into God's house. Any and any hope and think that our service and our worship is accepted by God. May God help us to understand the level of holiness that he is calling us to. So we are seeing here that this pagan king was requesting men to serve in his kingdom without blemish. And these young men, he wanted them to be wise, full of wisdom, cunning in knowledge and understanding. But before... We move on. Let me just back up to verse 3, where it talks about this master of eunuchs. Did you know that Daniel and his friends became eunuchs in Babylon? All because of King Ezekiah's sin? Yes, friends, because of 
interest of time, I will not be able to read all the scriptures because I want to be brief. But you can read 2 Kings 20, 16 to 18, and you will see where Isaiah the prophet told him that all he had shown, the folks, the ambassadors from Babylon, will be taken to Babylon. And the seed, his seed, would become eunuchs in Babylon. So sin does not only affect the doer, it can affect generations to come. Are we seeing and understanding the seriousness of sin? And one sin that we hold dear to can lead us and others astray. And friends, we need to overcome sin in our life. The whole sanctuary message is about getting rid of sin. And God is seeking individuals to stand in spiritual Babylon for him. So his character can be exalted in this earth. So because of King Ezekiah's sin, these boys became eunuchs in Babylon. And when I research who is a eunuch, it shows that these individuals were castrated because they would have no sexual desire and they were solely sold out to the king, to be faithful workers for this earthly king. Spiritual Babylon have priests who are eunuchs by choice. So one can also be a eunuch by choice. But these men were castrated because the king want their undivided attention, their undivided service. Can you imagine what God expects of us, friends? So these boys were to be brilliant in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. They were to understand science and had the ability to stand in the king's palace, whom they might what? Teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans, friends. We have come to a time that if you trust your teacher to educate your children, you're making a big mistake. Parents, we need to do our jobs and play our role. Some of us at times we say, we can't wait for school to, home to send you to teacher. They don't belong to teachers. They belong to you. And God will ask you, where's that little flock? So we have come to a time where we can see spiritual Babylon is pushing a certain agenda. This, they wanted to re-educate God's children to renew their mind. But what does Romans 12 2 tells us? That we should not what, conform to this world's standard, but we should be transformed, hope, renewing of our mind. So we need to ensure we are training our children and teaching them, if you have a son, you are a boy, you are a male, if you have a girl, you are a girl, and you will always remain a girl. Only two genders we have friends, male and female. I'm so happy for the word of God and how God knows the future and he gives it to us. So just as those literal Babylon had an agenda back then to re-educate God's people, the same is being happening now in spiritual Israel. Mm -hmm. And so as parents, we have a job to do to ensure we lay that foundation, which is what? The word of God. And look at this. This pagan king wanted to give these boys the best of the best. And so he said in verse 5, give them my meat, give them my wine to drink. And what are we seeing in Revelation? All those who drink the wine of spiritual Babylon will become drunk with false doctrine. And all who drank the king's wine back then, all who ate the king's meat, we soon see what happened to them. So here's this pagan king trying to provide the best diet for these boys. He wanted the best for them, you know. And so he said, give them my meat, give them my drink. And here it goes on to tell us in verse 7 that they changed their names. 
And in those days, if, for example, my, 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 my for now my wife's name is Helena and I am Gordon, I just use like the first three letters, Helgar, and name my child Helgar. Not so with those people back then. The name they gave them meant something and it had to do with one's character. And so we can see in verse seven, the names being changed is a means of changing the character of God's faithful people back then. And Mark, you, Daniel and his friends, they were only 18 years old. So your name has to do with what? Your character. The name of Daniel, it means God is my judge. And the other names had to do with the God whom they serve. But if you should jump over to verse 8 of chapter 4, you will see where King Nebuchadnezzar said to Daniel, but at the last Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belshazzar, according to the name of my God. You see that, friends? So they change their names and give them names of their Babylonian gods. So this was a move to change their character. And that is what God is seeking to develop in us, his character, so his name can be exalted in this earth as we live in spiritual Babylon. But I love verse 8. But Daniel what? Purpose in his heart, in his mind, that he would not defile himself. Friends, Daniel parents taught him the importance of caring for the body. It was the custom of the Jews who taught their children anatomy and physiology, the body and how it functions. And if you know about the body, it is made up of different systems. The digestive system, for example, the nervous system, the respiratory system, the endocrine system, the skeletal system, all of these systems that we are made of, different systems, but they work in unison. They work as one. And that is why we are told in Corinthians that even though we are different members in the church, we are of one, one body. And all of us are important. And we need to work together. We need to function together for the upbuilding and the glory of God. So we are seeing here that Daniel's parents taught them that if they misuse or mistreat their body, they would be held accountable to God. And many of us, sad to say, treat our cars better than how we treat this body, which is the temple of God. I'm sure you have heard about bad gas. Bad gas is like the blood of the car. And whatever gas you put in, you want to put the best. So it flows to the engine and your engine can function properly. Whatever we put in this body converts to blood and then it feeds the brain. And then it can cause confusion, friends. And that is why what we are seeing here in verse 8 is the law of temperance. Daniel is saying no to unclean meats, no to foods that are offered to idols, no to wine that will deaden my brain cells, that will cut oxygen from my brain. So, friends, some of us will say, oh, I'm not the one providing for myself, so I have to just eat what I get. But here we are seeing that Daniel made up his mind. Comes what may, I am not going to eat it, the king's meat. Comes what may, I'm not going to drink it, the king's wine. So we have to be temperate. Go with me to Second Peter chapter 1. Let me show you something here quickly. In order for you and I, to be partakers of the divine nature, which is the character of God, we must become temperate. Look at this, 2 Peter 1, picking up at verse 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Yes, friends, God has given us great and precious 
promises that by these he might be partakers of the divine nature, the character of God. God wants to reproduce in us his character. God wants to see his image in you and in me. Christ's object lesson page 69 tells us that Christ is waiting with longing desire to see himself manifested in his church. When the character of God is fully reproduced in us, then Jesus will come and claim us as his own. But could it be possible that many of us can't develop this character, this divine nature? We cannot be partakers of it because we are intemperate. Friends, here the Bible tells us that when we partake of the divine nature, we will escape the corruption of this world that is us full with loss. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge what? Temperance. So friends, we have to be temperate. This is what I consider the Christian growth because you notice we're just adding, add to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, love. So we are growing, growing. As Christians, we cannot be stagnant. We must be growing daily until we get to that statue of that divine nature that God is seeking to bestow upon us. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that he shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, Laodicea, Laodicea state, and cannot see far off, and have forgotten that he was what purged from his old sins. Somebody need to be reminded tonight that God has purged you from your old sin. God has purged you from your old sins. And he wants to bestow upon you his divine nature, his glorious character. So we can finish this work. He can be made known among the heathen in the spiritual Babylon. And here verse 10 tells us, Wherefore, brother, brethren, give diligence to make your calling an election sure. And here it says, For if he do these things, he shall never, he shall what? Never fall. Yes, friends. So God wants a glorious church, a church without spot, a church without wrinkle, a church without <laughs> blemish to present unto himself. But we must be temperate. Mm -hmm. We need to right. abstain from all yeah, so and use in moderation that which is good. Yes, friends. So Daniel obeyed the law of temperance. And we know there are eight laws, but we are going to talk about four tonight. And here it tells us that God brought Daniel in favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And look at this in verse 10. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse, like in than the children which are of your sort? So here the prince of the eunuch was telling Daniel, how can I give you a different diet from what the other Jews are to get? Are you getting the message, friends? Romans 9.27 tells us that the children of Israel are like the sand of the sea, yet a remnant shall be saved. So it wasn't only Daniel and his friends were there. There were other Jews who bowed and they ate unclean meats. They ate meats that were given to idols and they drank alcohol. And guess what? Many of us We'll say, oh, but I don't drink alcohol. But you make it in your stomach. How you combine your foods. How you eat your food. You make alcohol in the stomach. And many of us love those um, vanilla 
yes, to season, um, to spice up the, the, the porridge and the, the pastry and all these things. That is made with alcohol, the vanilla, the, the, and, and the rose water, and rose uh, almond. almond, and which other one? Almond and rose water. Almond and rose water, and all these things that are laced with alcohol. And, vinegar. and vi vinegar, well, vinegar is even worse. That should never be consumed by seven Adventists. Vinegar is in ketchup. Vinegar is the next stage of fermentation from alcohol. So it's worse than alcohol. We only should use vinegar to clean our floors and do other stuff. Never should ingest it. Go back to the cross, friends. You'll see where Jesus did not drink that vinegar, or else you and I would, would have lost the plan of salvation, would have been, we would fail. So we are seeing that even in literal Babylon, a remnant of four stood up for the man Christ Jesus. How many of us are standing for Christ Jesus in literal Babylon, in spiritual Babylon? Are, 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 are we, are, oh, I'm afraid to be identified as a Seventh-day Adventist. Oh, I, I don't want them to, so I'll just take a little piece of this. Or I, I will just compromise. No, friends, let us stand for what we believe. Let us go on, because I, as I said, I don't want to be too long. So look at verse 7. It tells us that Daniel said to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, uh, Mich Michelle, and Azariah. So look at this now. And open your mics and tell me which law of health you think this is. When Daniel said to these, this man, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, 10 days. Which law of health? Please open your mic. Which law of health would we trust apply? Trust in God. Trust Thank in you God. so much. Affirm trust in divine power. Affirm trust in God. Go with me to the book of Psalms. Psalms 125 and verse 1. And Psalms 56 verse 11. All right, let us pick up Psalms 56 11. What it says. Hear what it says. Psalm 56 11. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid of what? What man can do unto me? Too many of us are afraid. When God is saying to us in Isaiah 41, 10, fear thou not. I am with thee. Oh, you know, some of us might put grill on our windows, grill on our doors, and then we say we are safe. Friends, we cannot put our trust in our grills. We need to put our trust in God. And if there is never a time when God's church needs to trust in divine power, it is no. So we should not be afraid what man can do unto us. For Psalms 34, 7 tells us what? The angel of the Lord and camp it round about them that fear him and deliver them. And so what if you die? Aren't you serving Jesus who is the resurrection and the life? So we don't have nothing to worry about. And death for us is what? Asleep. We're just going to rest a little while. So friends, we need to trust in God. Psalms 125. And there are so many scriptures, but I'll just use these two. Psalms 125, verse 1, it tells us, They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but what? Abide it forever. So friends, we need to put God to the test today and watch him work. Many of us are falling, even when we ought to give our tithes and offering. It's a boy, the rent to be paid. Boy, the grocery to buy. Oh, the children need to go to school. The car need to insure. Oh, now we need lunch money. We need, I will find all manner of things to say. And we are counseled. Prove me now, said the Lord. If I will not pour out a blessing, and notice God says open a, a window. Then what if God open a door? If God open a window, we don't have enough room to, to receive it. What if God open a door? And blessing don't only come in a financial form. You're not sick. Praise God, that's a blessing. You're in your right mind. Praise God, that's a blessing. You have a wife, you have a husband, you have children, you have a job. Praise God, that's a blessing. So God says what? Return unto me and I will return unto you. And I can tell you, I'm not a chicken. I've been around for quite some time. 
I've never seen God's word fail. The failure is always on our part. So somebody needs to be encouraged tonight. Trust in God. So it goes on. It says, let them give me pulse to eat. Open your mics. Talk to me. Which law of health is this? Nutrition. Nutrition. Thank you so much. And then it says, and water to drink. Which law of health is that? Very good. <laughs> water. So we are actually seeing four laws of health here in Daniel chapter one. The first one we mentioned was what? Temperance. And as we have showed you in Second Peter 1, we cannot attain that divine nature unless we become what? Temperate. And 1 Corinthians 9.25 tells us that he who strives for the mastery must be what? Temperate in some things, in all things. And for those who are married on the line, let me just share this quickly. Yes, you know where I'm going. I'm talking to those who are married now. Even that you should be temperate too, because whenever the man, yes, you know what I'm saying, he lose one day supply of zinc. You hear that, friends? One day supply of zinc. And if you lose too much zinc, it can cause health problems. Go and do your research. So we must be temperate, even as married couples. Yes, friends. So God wants to give us his divine nature. We have to be temperate. We have to learn to trust in divine power, have a firm trust in God. And we must what? Obey the law of nutrition. Yes, friends. And also the law of water. So here we are seeing that this was the request of Daniel. And as I've mentioned before, that their parents taught them anatomy and physiology, how to know about the body, how to care for the body. And guess what, friends? Whatever we eat is either we are what? Creating disease or we are fighting it. And 1 Corinthians 10, 31 tells us, whether therefore we want eat or drink, we should do what? All to the glory of God. Let me share two quotes with you quickly. This is the youth instructor, May 31, 1894. Eating, drinking, and dressing all have a direct bearing upon our spiritual advancement. Oh, you didn't get that. Let me read it again for emphasis. Eating, drinking, and dressing. Yes, friends. So or we eat, or we drink, or we dress can either promote health or create disease. And look at this. He says here, it has a direct bearing upon our spiritual advancement. Are you getting the message? So that is why many of us are not growing in Christ because the stomach is in confusion, which is so intimately connected to the brain. And so we cannot even think properly and make a right decision. Counsels to diet and food, page 101, tells us respect paid to the proper treatment of the stomach will be rewarded in what? Clearness of thought and strength of mind. And we know the great controversy between Christ and Satan is a battle for our minds. Whoever control our minds will control our we think and how we act and how we worship. God wants control of our minds. Friends, the attack is upon our mind. Mm -hmm. The mind is the only place through which heaven can communicate. And therefore, we need to understand that we ought to be careful of what we put in our mouth because many of us die before our time. Oh, brother so-and-so time came. Oh, sister so-and-so time came. Nothing like that. Ecclesiastic 7, 17 tells us why should you die before your time? Many of us dig our graves with our forks. Many of us dig our graves with our teeth. 
we shouldn't eat because oh it looks good it smells good and I, I i want it no friends we should eat how will this glorify god how will this help me to care for the temple which i will be judged by the creator who created this temple for his holy spirit to dwell in we have to make a change friends it cannot be business as usual so let us move on so we are seeing that the jews were captured and taken to babylon and they were chosen to partake of the the king's meat and wine and poor laws of health which we mentioned daniel and his friends stood up to obey and friends we are counseled in the spirit of prophecy in my own words whenever we God's moral laws, God's Ten Commandments. How are you getting the message? So when we disobey the laws of health, it is easier for us to disobey the Ten Commandments. As I mentioned, the stomach is intimately connected to the brain. And if the stomach is confused, the brain is confused. And we need to go back to the Garden of Eden. Yes, friends, sugar clogs the brain. Tomorrow we'll talk more about the laws of hell. Let us look at what was the result of these boys being obedient to God's laws of hell. So here we are seeing that the exemption was granted in verse 14. And after 10 days, they had a, what? a stronger immune system. Yes, friends. How we eat and drink can compromise our immune system, which God has given us to fight our viruses. So we are seeing that they were fairer and fatter in, in flesh. And so they, 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 they were given the plant-based diet that they requested. They were given the water that they requested. Not Lasco, not Milo, not soda, not Arlix. But water, friends, not Malta and all these things. So they kept on eating a plant-based diet. And as a result of that, look at seven, verse 17. As for these, what? Remnant, the remnant, four boys. God gave them what? Knowledge and skill in learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Psalms 34 and verse 8 tells us, Oh, taste and see that my God is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. So when we have that firm trust in God, we will be blessed. So we are seeing here they were blessed with a clarity of mind. They were blessed with more knowledge and in learning and wisdom. And friends, when the time came for these boys to stand before the king, they were not five, but what? Ten times wiser than all the rim of that great power, Babylon. Why is it? that we are not wiser than those of the world? Why is it that we are not wiser than those in spiritual Babylon? Could it be that I am intemperate? Could it be that I am not paying close attention to the law of nutrition? Could it be that I rather to drink something with a little color in it than water? Could it be that I'm doubting God when I should have a firm trust in him? Dear to be like that. Friends, to close, I just want to share this little story. A little boy went down to a pier to catch the ferry. And while he was there, he saw an old man fishing. 
And the old man looked around and said, young man, there's a new pair downstream. Make your way downstream. The ferry doesn't come here anymore. And the little boy stood his ground. And the old man kept on fishing. And when he looked and he saw the little boy, he said, young man, the ferry doesn't come here anymore. Make your way downstream. And the little boy stood his ground. And the old man, he kept on fishing. And after a while, he looked. Guess what he saw? The young man was still standing. And he said, young man, the ferry doesn't come here anymore. Make your way downstream. And the little boy stood his ground. And all of a sudden, the horn started honking. And when they looked, they saw the ferry coming very fast. And to the old man's surprise, the ferry pulled in. The letters were let down. And the little boy went up. And while he was going up, he turned to the old man and said, Sir, my father is the captain. Jesus is the captain of this ferry that you and I are on. And just as how that daddy told that little boy, that's where you are to wait. He stood his ground. Who will you stand for tonight? Will you stand for the word of God? So I am just going to act as if uh, uh, I'm blending. No, friends, we need to stand our ground. And this story goes deeper. Daniel and his friends practiced health reform. And as a result of that, they did not bow to the image of the beast. You see where I'm going? So if we want to pass the test of worship, we must overcome the test of apathy by obeying the eight laws of heaven. May God help us that we will be dear to be like Daniel. And when you look at the meaning of dear, to stick one next out, to put your life on the line. Friends, let us start as of tonight, ask God to help us to be obedient. His help us. God bless you.